For those of you out there joining us virtually by Zoom, uh, we have been inviting you to speak your mind, uh, ask questions uh, at appropriate points by simply raising your hand. Kelly will be watching to see that you're interested in being on camera and on audio. Uh, I think that we can uh, do that at any point instead of waiting until the very end. So when there are questions to be asked of the presenters, that we go ahead and allow people to do that, be shown on camera, promoted to panelists, unless they simply want to put it into Q&A or comments. Is that okay with you? That's fine. Okay. So, uh, Lieutenant Gomez, you're up. Uh, good evening. Thank you for allowing me to uh, give you guys the following presentation. I am about to share my screen. Okay, are you guys able to see it? Yes. We can see your screen. There we go. Thank you. Yay. All right. <laughs> All right. Once again, I'm Lieutenant Gustavo Gomez. Um, I work with the Albuquerque Police Department. I've been in law enforcement for about 20 years now. Um, and it's my pleasure to uh, give you the following presentation. So this is gonna be regarding the IMR 15 that just recently came out. So let's go through it. Okay, so, you know, the independent monitoring team is composed of the following uh, parties. We have the independent monitor who is Dr. James Ginger. The team members are composed of Mr. Phil Coyne, Mr. Dan Giaquinto, Dr. Laura Cunard, Mr. Rick Nacellis, Mr. Albert Prick, Mr. Steven Rickman, Dr. William Toms, and Mr. David Torres. Uh, and if you'd like to get a copy of the IMR 15, we can easily download it, going through the city website at cabq.gov, and this is the link. So the CASA, the settlement agreement, is divided into the following sections. We have the use of force, specialized units, crisis intervention, policies and training, misconduct, complaint intake, investigation and adjudication, staffing, management and supervision, recruitment, selection and promotions, officer assistance and support, and community engagement and oversight. So there's a total of 344 paragraphs in the CASA and 276 of them are measurable for compliance. There's three levels of compliance. You have the primary level compliance, which deals with policy and procedures. The second level is training. And then you have the operational, which deals with daily operations. So on this chart, what we have is, is the IMR comparison from IMR 1 all the way to 15. As you can see from IMR 14 and 15, we have actually maintained a 100% compliance under primary uh, compliance. And we've actually maintained that 100% compliance since IMR 8, which is about two years ago. From IMR 14 to IMR 15, we actually made a huge increase from, from 82% to 99%. This is mainly due to the uh, use of force, supervisor training, and also that uh, PEMS, which is a performance evaluation monitoring system. So these trainings have helped us increase that to 99% at this time. And as far as uh, operational uh, compliance, we went down from, I'm sorry, we went up from 62% to 70%. And that's mainly due to um, the progress related to the OBRD and the training. So as you can see, these numbers are actually the biggest increased numbers that we have seen so far in, since IMR started back in IMR 1. So let's look dig deeper into the IMR 14. So when IMR 14 came out, our primary compliance still is at 100%. Secondary compliance was uh, 82% and the operational compliance was 62%. And if we break it down, we have the use of force category, which had about an 8% increase in compliance. 
specialized units uh, retained uh, no change. So they maintained a no change whatsoever. Crisis intervention had a 4% increase in compliance. Policies and procedures maintained no change. Misconduct compliant, I'm sorry, misconduct complaint intake and investigation and adjudication, that actually decreased by 10%. Staffing management and supervision had an increase of 17%. Recruitment, selection, and promotion maintained no change. And also officer assistant and support did not have any change. As for community engagement and oversight, there was a 2.5% increase. And implementation and compliance assessment and enforcement, there was no change. Now, when we jump into IMR 15, we still maintained 100% for primary compliance. We went up to 99% secondary and went up to 70% operational. So there was an actual, for secondary compliance, there's an actual 20.7% increase. In operational, there's a 12.9 increase. But we're gonna break it down into the categories. For use of force, we actually had an increase of 38%. Specialized unit retained no change. Crisis intervention, there was an increase of 11% compliance. In policies and procedures, there's a 9% increase. For misconduct complaint intake, investigations and adjudication, there's an, there was a 14% increase. Staffing, management, and supervision, there's a 60% increase. Recruitment selection and promotions remain with no change. And also officer assistance and support remain with no change. Community engagement and oversight, there was a 16% increase. And the implementation, compliance, assessment, and enforcement retain no change whatsoever. Um, at this time, I'm able to... Uh, answer any questions that you may have. And then also in the event that I'm not able to answer the questions, you can also contact the Professional Standards and Accountability Bureau and their address is 8pdcompliance at cabq.gov. Is there any questions that I might be able to answer for you? Have there been any uh, killings by police this year? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question again? Yes, this is John Comstock. Have there been any killings by the police, Albuquerque police this year? Any killings? That is correct. Okay, do you mean an officer involved shootings? Yes, uh, they have. There has been a involved shooting resulting in death. Yes. Uh, yes, there have been some OISS um, officer involved shootings this year. Okay, could you, could you uh, elaborate? Um, I do not have the exact number of how many we had this year, uh, but I know they're, they are under investigation, but I cannot go into so much detail about them because one, I'm not personally involved in the investigating those cases but I know they are currently investigation phases. Okay, uh, about, about how many have there been uh, this year? Do you, do you have that or is, is the uh, commander gonna give us that information? I do not know the exact number, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. So uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Kelly sent out the April report for uh, internal affairs, both uh, the force division and uh, professional standards. Uh, I did post that those two reports on a link and I will send the link to anybody who's uh, attending by Zoom tonight because I will have their email address and I'll send that out and you can take a look at that. And I think what we can do is we can find out if those monthly reports, January through April, are available on the APD website or on the city 
website for CPCs. And if they're not, uh, we can get them and I can provide a backup archive of those. Uh, I try to make it easy to find the critical information that people typically refer to, and that sounds like a good resource. We'll find out where those reports are, get them online someplace, let you know how to access them, and then you can do the number crunching. And, and uh, I, I thought that they were quite uh, comprehensive for what I saw in April. And I think yes. you've sent those. The, the reports come from the CPOA uh, director every month. So before the CPOA meeting, a couple of days before, we get those reports so they can discuss them at the meeting. And that's a good place to, uh, to find that information. Log on to the city website, find out when their meetings are, and then uh, ask to join to as an observer. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So, uh, are there any other questions or comments uh, for uh, Lieutenant Gomez? Kelly, do you see any in chat? We have no you questions. said there was a decrease in the misconduct complaint intake, and I was wondering why you thought that happened. Um, I do not, um, do not have that information as to what exactly occurred to have the decrease. Uh, the presentation that I provided was actually given to me to present. So I do not have personal knowledge of what exactly happened there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the, from the attendees right now? I see none. Okay, well we thank you, Lieutenant Gomez. I'm sorry when I'm speaking, I should probably talk to the owl here. Uh, so Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, before we end, real quick, I wanted to let you guys know um, there was a question asked earlier how many officer-involved shootings we have had this year. Um, we have had five officer-involved shootings. They are they are all under investigation, so we can't go into details about them, but I did want to let you know that uh, year to date, it's been five. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead. How many OIS resulted in death? Uh, unfortunately, because they're all under investigation and I'm not the investigating officer, I cannot answer those questions. Um, and, and until the investigations have been completed, I don't think they're able to give you those answers. I just know that there has been five this year. And that would be officer involved shootings? Correct. That's all we have. Okay.